Well, we got a new job in the shop over the weekend. Now, this was a collision job, and I'm going to show you that. I don't know if you can see the situation, but the deal we have is, is uh, it turns out to be a collision. What's going on? You ready to go to work? I'm ready. Huh? I've been ready for hours. <clears throat> you see this car we got here? Wow. Is this the kind of car you would drive, or is this your kind of style of a not vehicle? Not style. It's not? No, but it's a cool car. Hmm. Look at the car real close. Okay, can you turn the lights on, please? we got to have some light on this action to go over the whole thing, because I'm not happy about it. This is not a job that my friend Pete is happy to get in. This is a collision job, okay? This is a collision job. Do you understand what I'm saying? Come on over here. Come on over here. Let's look it over. Look at the paint job on this thing. Come on, over here. Over here. Follow me. Follow me. Come on. Look what we got right here. Can you get my flashlight? I don't even think you need a flashlight for this shit. Okay? Look at this shit. Solvent popping everywhere. Look at this. Look how rough the finish is on this thing. He took a marker and he went around and he said, I don't like this, 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 everything. Okay, that's not my fucking problem. Nobody said it was your okay, problem. Okay, that's not my problem Get that he doesn't like those shoulder. little dents in it. Get that chip Look what we got over here. Look at this. He tried to color sand and buff the paint job. It didn't work out too good for him. Come on over here in this light and you can see all some of the situation we got going here. I don't know if, can you see that solvent popping oh, yeah, going on? I and see it now. Do you see, okay, now are you agreeing with me here that this isn't my jig? Okay. Why are you screaming? It's not my sitch. Hold on a minute. You made the camera go blurry. There. Your loudness. All right. Made it go blurry. There's no reason to start screaming. No, it's not your job. No, it actually, it is your fucking job. So this is my job? It's a fucking body shop. What oh, the okay. fuck? Oh, okay. So he brings it down here for a collision job. Then he starts taking a marker and going over the whole thing like we're supposed to. Yeah. No. Like, Paint the whole car. That's what you're saying. Come here. Where are you going? Let's see if we can get her back in here. Are you there? I didn't hear the door open and shut. I know you're hiding around the corner. Are you, are you, are you finished acting like an asshole? Yeah, sure. Come on in here. I'm in a body shop, Pete. People want their cars fucked. I understand that. God, man. But Why he are brings you it down like here for a collision so, job. So and then he expects quick. a paint job out the whole car. I seriously doubt he expects you to fucking do what's above, without being paid, above and beyond okay. the insurance job, Pete. I don't know why you act like that. God, man, I don't even like to be around you because of the way you fucking act. Let's go over this collision job. Let's see if it's even durable to fix. Can we do that? I don't know. You're going to go 
raving and fucking ranting about shit. This is what I put. That was a you in bumped in. Well, you bumped into the camera. What were you saying? Go ahead. This is what I fucking like right here. What's that? Motherfucking car on the ground. That's right. Go ahead. Ready to go. So he brings the car down here for a collision job. You're gonna have to get a little closer to this because I want to show you this. Now, this is uh, made out of very hard steel. Do you see that? Look. Are you watching that? It's not even dent. If I did that to my truck, what would happen? You'd have a cat. That's right. Be a thousand dents. What I'm trying to say is this thing is made out of tank material. This is a 1940. I want you to look real close at the action going on here. Look how buckled up this hood is. Look at the line, the body line going down that fender. Yeah, it's Okay, look over here. See how it lays in there real nice, not perfect, but you know, 1940 style. See how this chrome's coming down this side here. See how this is all looking really good, okay? So the problem that we have, uh, of course this fender's gonna need some type of action going on here. Okay, we're gonna have to hammer and dolly that out, but look at the way the grill is. All right, that's bent to shit. Um, I don't think this is bent. I think the grill's pushed in, and then this corner of this hood, all right, is messed up pretty bad. Well, it's hit pretty hard right there, and that may have shoved it in a little bit. Yeah, so I So that it's, you know, a little close right here. Okay, baby, you're not even looking at the camera when you're doing all that. You need to stand back farther. You're like looking at this much of it. Okay, babe. You know, you can put your finger out in front of the camera and do that. You used to be a good camera person. You used to be. And when I first met you, you used to not bitch like this. Oh, mother. Here we go. You've turned into this fucking... Yeah. I don't know sure. what to call you. you. Know, that's, how it is. that's how it is in a brand new relationship. You're what nice brand? to each other and you, you know, play... You play the girlfriend boyfriend thing, and everybody's. And then your true colors come wants... out, and you show that you're an asshole. That's all right, time. right, just me only. You're right, only me. You, only you got one. videos, thousands yeah. of videos to prove it. You're right. I'm the only one because it only takes one person to argue. You can only argue with yourself, especially when there's two fucking people in the room. Hey, do you like to argue? You started. Here we go. Look, I was ready to move on. To the next fucking deal. You started. And you, now you get right back in. What? I ain't started shit. That's what you I want. I ain't doing nothing. I'm standing here. When you're ready to move down the line, let me know. Go. Are you sure? Feels good, don't it? What? Constantly being harassed. Will you look at the hood? That's what you did now to you're, me. You're, you're getting too close because now you're only looking at that much. Bullshit, I got you and the hood in the picture, so I don't know how you think that. So we got the hood right here that's rolled. You see that? It's rolled this way, and I think this has happened because this got hit right here and buckled the hood up like this. Um, I hate to say this, but is this hood really salvageable with that type of damage? Now, if I go to pull on the hood here, okay, if I put a hook right in here somewhere and pull the hood, move, using my frame machine, of course, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fuck this hinge up, because I'm gonna be pulling, this is the thing that's holding the hood on the car. So I'm gonna have to jerry-rig or figure out some way that I can clamp a, a clamp here. Do you see what I'm saying? Get me a mo clamp out, clamp here, and then tie it down to the floor somewhere. Uh, here's a tie down. Let's show everybody what a tie down is. Okay, I'll have to find a tie down, like this right here behind the car. Tie it down to the fucking floor somehow, some way. Use my frame machine to pull that out. Now, the insurance guy paid to fix this problem. Because he's got this classic, you know, classic car insurance. I told the guy, I said, look, dude, it might be a small dent to you, but that's major action going on due to the fact that this is a classic car. Listen to that. Listen how solid it is. I'll bet you I didn't even dent it. There's not one dent in the car. Now, the fender, 
if you run your hand down that, you can see that's pretty good. I'm thinking the grill, all right, we're gonna take that fender off and then we'll move the grill out because look at this hole right here. Look how this hole is, it's like wobbled out. So when we loosen that, it's gonna pop the grill back out in place where it's supposed to go. All right, so that was actually good that this hole's wobbled out or whatever the fuck's going on with this situation. Um, we'll unbolt that bolt and this will probably bring the grill back out in place or we can bend it in place. But uh, you know why this was all caused, don't you? Can I show you? Can I show you the main reason this was caused? If you don't mind me doing that. Can I? I don't care. Come on over here. This is the fucking reason that that happened. Right there. Because Mr. Hot Rodder didn't want to use a bumper. Because he thinks it's cooler to not have a bumper on the front of his fucking street rod. Now how many times have I told people when building a street rod to always put the bumpers on them? They think that they look cooler without the bumpers. Am I right or wrong? Usually. Nobody wants to put the bumpers on them. But it seems like everybody that doesn't want to put the bumpers on them always gets in accidents. How many of these things have I fixed where they didn't have the bumper on them? Quite a few. Look what we got back here. Can you zoom in on that? Can you zoom in on that? I don't know what I'm zooming in on. The frame machine. It's dark in there. It's going to take that see. big machine with all them hooks and all that stuff up against the wall to fix that hood. And you want me to tell you what this is called? You ever heard of Ripley's Believe It or Not? Huh? Yeah. This is called Pete's Believe It or Not. My friend Pete. Are we making any sense now? Uh, you're okay. trying to. People are looking at that going, you're going to use a frame machine to straighten a hood out? Yeah, you're fucking A right. Because this hood is a fucking... What you're gonna do, Pete? Probably screaming now, across the whole fucking lot. The guy brings the car down here, and he says, "I don't have a lot of money, Pete." Okay. The insurance company's paying to fix this, but on the other hand, he's going over the paint job. Now, I want to give you a little history on this car. Okay. He bought this car from a guy that's 86 years old. <clears throat> Remember old man Bob? Yeah. Okay. The guy that he bought it from is like old man Bob. He owned this car for like 45 years, and he worked on it off and on every day for 40 years, and this was his pride and joy. So the old man that owned this car, the 85-year-old man, painted this car by himself in his garage. He took it to one car show, one car show. This is how arrogant and snotty ass and, and vain people are. Here's this 85-year-old man, okay? He's got 40 years in working on this car, and if you look at it, come on over here. He's not, he wasn't even done with it. Look, okay? I mean, look at the paint here. See how it's all dull? And, but look at the interior. The door panels aren't on it, the glass isn't it. So here's this 85-year-old man. I'm gonna tell you, this is what kind of fucking world we live in. Here's Grandma and Grandpa sitting down by his pride and joy, because this is his pride and joy. He's been working on it for, what, 40 years? He ain't got every fucking dent out of it. It's not a $100,000 car show, or should I say show car, all right? But it's a car that he did at home in his garage for 40 fucking years. He goes to one car show to show off what he did and what he accomplished in 40 years, and what do you think 90% of the car show crowd do? I already know, you already know, and everybody else does. Go ahead. He just walked right by like that. No, they walked by it, but guess what they did? Uh, Gee, who painted this piece of shit? Gosh, look at that. Wow, he didn't even re-chrome that. Look at this bullshit antenna. This thing looks like shit. It's a clown car. Gosh, what's this? Who painted Ford on that? They did a tacky job. I could have done better than that. So, the old man goes home after the car show, and he's so depressed. And he's crying to grandma. He is literally crying. After 40 years of restoration job, 85 years old that he is, he's crying. 
Because this is his pride and joy. So what do you think he does? He apparently put it up for sale. He puts it up for sale for $15,000. Now, is this car worth $15,000? It's got a Camaro front clip that he put on it. Looks like it's worth that to me. It's, he puts a Camaro front clip. It had a 350 drivetrain in it. Now, the guy that owns the car, he took the motor out and put this motor in. Uh, they put a Ford engine in it because he wanted a Ford engine, but it had a 350. If you look real close, you can see it's got power steering. It's got late model uh, suspension on it. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's been clipped with a Camaro front end. Look what we got here. We got late model power brakes. We got the whole situation going on. You know, he's got this custom firewall thing, you know? Right? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So he puts the car up for sale for 15000 Everybody wants to knock the price down. That's natural. He gets a guy that offers him 13 grand. He comes back and the guy says, "Sorry, I don't have the 13,000. I got a friend that has 13,000. I'm going to call him." He goes over this guy that owns the car now. Okay, are you following me? The guy that owns the car now. He calls the old man up and he says, "How much will you take for the car?" He says, "Well, I want 13." He goes, "Man, I don't know if I can go that high. Let me think about it." He grabs his number on caller ID or whatever. A day or two later, the old man calls back and says, look, if you give me $10,000, you can have it. So this guy goes over and buys it for $10,000. So now that we know the story on the fucking car, this guy buys the car, he wrecks the car, it's over at my friend Pete's, the insurance company's paying to fix this. Can we fix the car? Can we? Who fucking knows? In the meantime, we have got to block sand this car down, DA the car down, fix these little minor dents that are circled, and then we are going to paint the whole car, and we're going to put some flat clear on it, semi-gloss flat clear. Basically like this right here, all right? This is the flex and flat. This is what we're going to use on it. Because the reason we're going to use this, and I told the owner that, is because he's concerned about all the weights in the car and the imperfections and all this. I told him, look, dude, I'm going to have to charge you extra for the extra work. He said, that's fine. But I'm not rich. And I said, okay, then I'm not going to do a masterpiece paint job on this. What we're going to do is you're going to go around the car, circle the dents that you want fixed. I will fix those dents. And then we will block sand the car down, put a fresh coat of paint on it, three coats of flex and flat, and be done with it. So I'm going to get my frame machine out, and I'm going to figure out how we can straighten this hood, because this is not looking good. we got to get this unbolted here. we got to get that back in line with this. Once we get that back in line, that's going to tell us how much we got to pull this hood out. We're going to have to take this tire off. Hammer and dolly that out later, not yet, because I don't think I disagree with you. I don't think. Gotta go ahead and get it done. We got the Chevelle on the ground. It's ready to go. Actually, the what Chevelle. I, actually, is ready what to I think it. we should do is we should pull that car out, put that car on the trailer. Let me take it to the muffler right, shop. Right. Pull that back car back in. And start well, you know what? Out. You're thinking on the right track, but we got one problem. There's a car on the trailer, and until Norm comes over and unloads the motor of the car, and we get the car off the trailer, we can't do that. Okay? Well, that would be my. And that